The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. It's time to get it straight. No chaser with Jasmine Canning. Overall, it's just a good thing. Tap into the conversation. Check one, two. As Jasmine covers the latest issues affecting our community and the world. It is absolutely vital that the truth comes out. This is Straight No Chaser with Jasmine Canning. Let's go, man. Friday. Welcome to this edition of Straight No Chaser with me, your host, Jasmine Kanick. I am broadcasting from the lovely Lamert Park Studios of Morris Media. Hey, Poetess, how you doing? <laughs> well, this week is part three of my Beyond the Protest series. And uh, part one, we looked at what the future prosecution of police officers across the nation looks like. We had that conversation with former San Francisco District Attorney and LA County District Attorney candidate, uh, George Gascon. Last week, we had a really great panel of um, black police officers who came in and they just you know, shared their experience of being caught in the middle and, and understanding, um, understanding the pain on both sides, which I thought was a really great conversation to have because I don't think we hear enough from um, black police officers in this country. Um, and this week, we are going to tackle one of my favorite subjects, which is the subject of police unions um, and whether or not there's a role for police unions in police reform. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do this, this, <laughs> this week for this show. So since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, there's been a long overdue intensified scrutiny on police unions and the power that they wield. Police unions gained clout during the war on drugs during the 1980s and 90s when the political establishment on both sides of the aisle wanted to be seen as tough on crime and earned such, such recognition with their support. That gave police unions access to the levers of power and the relationship remained entrenched even after that political climate had changed. Add to that the news media's propensity to always rely on law enforcement for information related to alleged crimes, even when it's more than abundantly clear that the police department lies or doesn't tell the truth in all of the situations. Those new to this discussion don't understand that um, policing for the most part is a state and local function. So when you hear about federal initiatives, um, they can help set the tone, but they don't have as much practical impact. Law enforcement has enjoyed long-standing support in white communities, which has directly contributed to its influence. Police unions have organization, they have history, they have relationships, they have money, and probably most imp their most important asset they have the unquestioned ability to be seen as the go-to place for 99% of people's facts. People don't question their word, but that's changing a bit because of video, but it hasn't changed enough. Contracts that seek to advance pay, health benefits, et cetera, for police officers are not the issue when we talk about unions. The issue is over the bargained, uh, the issue is, <laughs> sorry, the issue is over the last decade's unions and the fact that they've bargained for influence and direct actions when it comes to officer discipline. We've seen that a lot. Those encroachments of managerial rights have been approved by elected and appointed administrative and legislative branches, and police unions have gone as far as these officials have allowed. Instead of risking alienating taxpayers by asking for larger salaries, uh, police unions focus on gaining more job security and more favorable work working terms that um, are usually more palatable to elected officials. 
that job security has led to a culture of police officers who are allowed to use force in their jobs and have a greater capacity to physically harm someone in our society without facing any consequence. Because of their job security and thanks to elected officials, <laughs> that is where we are with the police union. So tonight I've put together a panel of what I think is um, a group of outstanding people who I think will be able to help us um, really have this conversation about what the role of the police union is going to be um, going forward, particularly as it relates to um, police reform. So first I want to introduce Jan Perry. She is a former Los Angeles City Councilwoman. She represented the 9th District, which in included downtown, Little Tokyo, South LA. Mayor Eric Garcetti selected Ms. Perry to run the Economic Workforce Development Department. That's what happens when you're a talker, your mouth gets dry. Uh, Ms. Perry currently serves as the executive director of the Infrastructure Funding Alliance, a national initiative to meet future infrastructure, economic development, and environmental challenges. The organization's mission is to develop and advocate approaches and strategies that motivate government at all levels to implement environmentally and fiscally sustainable infrastructure projects. Thank you, Councilman Perry, for being here. Thanks. Joining us for, uh, via Skype, I'm so happy that he uh, agreed to come on, is uh, Tyler Eisen, who is a retired LAPD detective, and he's also the former president of the Los Angeles Police Protective League, which represents the rank and file police officers in the LAPD. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And last but certainly not least is my former boss. <laughs> Marshall McLean is the president of the Los Angeles Airport Peace Officers Association and a senior lead officer for the Los Angeles Airport Police Department. He's been in law enforcement for over 20 years, and he is one of only a handful of African Americans who had a police union in the United States. Hi, Marshall. Hi, Jazz. Thanks for having me. And I'm glad that you mentioned that you were on the payroll of a police union. Oh, I talk about it all the time. Yeah. I, I believe in full disclaimers. <laughs> I tell the truth. I don't try I to do. I don't try to hide anything when it comes to that. Like, no. And I, I was good at my job. Yes, mm -hmm. you were. Um <laughs> So I always do this one disc disclaimer before I talk about the police and police departments. I say I'm not against the police. I'm not against the police department, but I am against police who commit misconduct, as I believe we all should be. So when I engage in these conversations, particularly around police officers, it's not because I'm anti-police, but it's really because we are at a turning point in our country right now where we are having real finally, real serious conversations about the changes that need to be made in the criminal justice system. So this is straight no chaser, which means we are frank, we are candid, we get straight to the point. And the first question that I wanna put on the floor is whether or not the police union has institutionalized the culture of being a bad cop by its representation of the status quo. Is that me? It could be you, it okay. could be Tyler. I'll <laughs> well, that that statement would be uh, equivalent to saying the UTLA, Teachers Union for LA, um, has institutionalized bad teachers, that they protect bad teachers. Fundamentally, unions, regardless of what uh, profession, their job is to improve the quality of life for their membership. Uh, we happen to be a police union, and Tyler can speak to this as well, and our job is to improve the quality of our, our, our members. So when we talk about um, the fundamentals of this country and we talk about you're innocent until proven guilty, that includes police officers too. And what you said at the beginning, and you've known me for a long time, and Tyler will agree to this too, I'm pretty sure, we don't want bad cops either. We don't want to work with bad cops. So when we talk about um, bad cops still being on the force, depends on what the force is, depends on what those officers did, I have many friends who are currently no longer police officers because they lost their job. So uh, this idea that we just simply protect bad cops, uh, I don't think that's quite accurate. There's over 800,000 police officers in this country. Uh, cops get fired on a daily basis. Unfortunately, sometimes you only know about the high profile incidents. You wanna add anything, Tyler? I'd love to. Uh, Jasmine, Marshall's right. First of all, nobody, uh, you had four police officers on last week and they were loud and clear. Nobody hates a bad cop 
more than a good cop. But share with me what a police union should do when we have an obligation and everybody has a right to a defense um, in order to, to make sure that due process is provided. And I can't tell you that personally the number of days and weeks and times I pled and tried to convince management of my police department to do things right so we couldn't win cases because they were sloppy or because they did things they shouldn't do or because they shortcutted. The truth is all, the, all of your complaints about police departments in general um, violating people's rights or taking shortcuts to get things done because the ends justify the means. I got, I've got story after story of management doing it to rank and file and it was my job to not allow that to happen. And would you blame defense attorneys for a culture of criminality in the city of Los Angeles? Because that's what you're doing when you blame police unions for a culture of bad cops. Well, wouldn't you, well, you probably wouldn't agree, but would you agree that out of all of the labor, labor unions that we have, only police unions have the optics of using their power and their influence to keep their members out of prison? I would definitely not agree. Really? What yeah. What other union, what other union, I, I don't hear many um, cases of teachers in the news and UTLA used that them as an example, mm -hmm. having to um, defend teachers in the way that police unions defend officers. I mean, think about the labor family, right? When you mm -hmm. think about the entire labor family, mm -hmm. really it's only police unions where the union is usually and as a huge part of their work is to make sure that officers don't face criminal charges. No, you guys that's, provide that's, attorneys that's for officers. Accurate. You provide attorneys, right? Yes. You Most help defend. Do. You, def you defend. Most unions do have some type of legal defense for their employees. You think the Teamsters don't? Who? Uh, let, okay, let's take do the Teamsters. Do you think the Teamsters don't? Let's take the Teamsters, for example. Okay. Um, I don't think the Teamsters have to uh, call on attorneys more than the police unions do for their members. I think you'd be incorrect. Longshoremen, Teamsters, they have attorneys. They are, the incidences where there may be some type of wrongdoing where they have an attorney to come in and defend their person. Okay, well. And, and Jasmine. Sure, go ahead, Tyler. Sorry. Let me just get one thing in here. The, the work of a police officer is dramatically different. Fundamentally different. It requires, uh, we require a higher standard. I, I'm not arguing any of that. And we all have to work together to make sure that people do the right thing. But we send police officers out there and we give them the training and the um, equipment to take people's freedom from them. And if necessary, use force. And those are the areas where if it's not done perfectly well or if it's or worse, if it's done really poorly or even criminally, mm -hmm. they are going to face a criminal accusation. It's not like a teacher who in the classroom is not likely to he's a teacher is not allowed to you use corporal punishment, for instance, anymore. So. If he batters somebody, that's not in the course and scope of their business. Right. In the police department, right. if we if we use force to arrest somebody, that's in the course and scope of of what you've trained us and paid us to do. And now we're arguing over whether it was done right or wrong or criminally or not criminally. That's what we do. It's a problem that we've got to figure out how to do, and that's why we all have to work together to get it done right. Okay, so... Um Police unions have lobbying power and they provide financial contributions to candidates for office. They provide uh, money to people who are in elected office already. 
um, enhancing their clout. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, California's largest police union has spent about $3 million in the last three years on its political operations. So my question is, uh, and it's two parts, would you agree that police union contracts in various ways can often make it very difficult to remove or discipline police officers? And my follow-up, Ms. Perry, is why do elected officials agree to these contracts with the police union? So um, I can only speak to you from my firsthand observation, my experience from 2001 to 2013, and certainly don't speak on behalf of the people who came after me. Uh, number one. Number two, I say to anybody who pays any attention to this whole process, you always have to follow the money. Now, uh, in, in, uh, in political candidates or elected officials, uh, they, you know, they run campaigns and uh, LA, City of Los Angeles has a matching funds program. Uh, the county does not have a matching funds program. And so, you know, I was taking some articles just to point out a few facts that California does lead the way in what is called independent expenditures. Mm -hmm. Now, independent expenditures are separate and apart from the campaign when a donor, it doesn't matter what the entity is, a donor can give money directly to a candidate within the limits of whatever uh, the race allows. Independent expenditures are the unregulated area, the area where there's no ceiling or limit to how much you can give on behalf of whatever group you are, are, are attempting to lobby on behalf of. Uh, but the only the, the caveat is is that you are not supposed to uh, coordinate with candidates uh, um, and then you can spend unlimited amounts of money now in California and this is not limited to you know police unions but in California I'm quoting this from an LA Times article on June the 11th independent expenditures cracked the 25 million dollar mark uh, before uh, June the 7th and that's an enormous jump from 16.7 million dollars uh, just a few years ago. And for those who are listening to this broadcast, I'm saying, I would like to tell them, if you really want to know the story about following the money, go to Cal Access. Right. Cal Access, or go to, um, I was going to give you this one too, because I think it's really important. Um, apps, A-P-P-S, one dot L-A vote dot net. And just Take a look through there and you'll see who's getting money and from where and how much and how often because that's where the disclosure happens. And I would say that most people in the community probably don't know that and, you know, may not want to take the time to do that. But that will tell you a lot um, about whether or not the person you send into office has discernment, courage, uh, and where their values lie. So the second question. So... When you were in office, mm -hmm. were you lobbied by the police union? Um, Did they give you money? Were no, they supportive no. of you? You know, Tyler, I don't know why, but they never liked me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was lobbied a few times. And, um, you know, for me, my filter was always community first. Now, I will say, you know, I worked in an area that included Central, Central Division, Newton, the South Bureau, a little bit of Southwest, a little bit of Southeast. So I was very, very deeply involved in relationships between LAPD and the community. And not only that, when I first got elected, we had a very high murder rate. I mean, I can still quote you details about what happened to people and their families. So I worked with the senior lead officers. I worked with, uh, with command uh, to try to help families. And we really worked very hard to push forward community-based policing so that we could be um, preventative rather than having to react constantly to people losing their loved ones. It was horrifying. It was absolutely horrifying. I mean, I was talking to Marshall before we started tonight, just remembering one down on 49th and Central that still haunts me to this day. Um, and so, you know, we needed, we needed those relationships and we needed to continue to work on them to continue to make them better each and every day. But no, I never. I, I don't think they, the Protective League ever endorsed me. Uh, I did get endorsed once by the, the command officers. Um, I have no idea why. And after a while, I, I don't think it mattered. Um, you know, because at least then, not now necessarily, but then with matching funds, I was always able to be competitive anyway. I understood the community. I don't believe that's the case anymore. Let me just say this. The match, there aren't enough matching funds in the world to, you know, I just finished another race and got outspent seven to one 
and uh, um, in independent expenditures. Uh, people need to watch these things because they're unregulated and, you know, you're never going to know what hit you uh, if you don't pay more attention. And so for me, the point of inflection is to not, um, is to speak to the community and to try to teach the community how you follow money and what comes out of the other end of that. When I say to people, they'll say, well, who are you going to endorse in this race or that? And I'll say, look, I'm going to give you this, this link you or your child or your grandchild, you go on that link, print it out, you read it, and then you decide, look at where that person gets their money from, from their independent expenditures. You decide how you feel about that and whether that fits within your value system or not. Right. So, and I'm going to come to you, Tyler and Marshall, um, for the first part of this question, but I want to stay there right for a minute. Okay. Do you feel that Elected officials who take money from police unions are conflicted. And it's, <laughs> I'm, yes. I wrote a whole op-ed about this last week just in terms of like looking at what the steps were that I thought that the protesters and people who wanted to, to, to see change really needed to, to, to um, work on. And that was something I talked about is like, yeah, well, if they're taking money, you know, and, and I'm going to come to you, Tyler and Marshall, because... Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that police unions give money to elected officials just for the heck of it, just because they like them. I think they expect a return on their investment. And, you know, and speaking to your point of mm -hmm. um, the IEs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in Los Angeles County, um, there was an independent expenditure um, to help Jackie Lacey, mm -hmm. uh, our current district attorney. And most of the money came from police unions. Mm -hmm. Police unions not even in LA County. Mm -hmm. Police unions everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it, it's it's like, you know, when because people are so mad that she hasn't prosecuted more police officers in some of these controversial shootings, controversial fatal shootings. And to your point, you're saying look at where a person is getting their money from or getting their support from. Mm -hmm. So Tyler and and Marshall. Going back to the first part of the question, it was, would you agree that, that the, the police union contracts that you fight so hard for, um, in a lot of ways, can often make it difficult to remove or discipline officers? Well, first off, yes, we fight hard. We're supposed to fight hard. Look, I, I didn't say, I'm I just know, asking the question. I know, and I'm answering the question. <laughs> I'm, your inflection of your voice, you fight hard for it. We're supposed to fight hard. That's our job. That's what we're elected to do. Or not, that's that's what our members nominate, elect us to do. So you you keep referring to police unions and you add the emphasis on police and union, but what we're doing is no different than any other union. Even when it comes to campaigns, and I know that's the second part of the question, but I'll first talk about the second part of your question because I have this up prompted up in front of me here. Sure. So your your point that police unions uh, gave a, a lot of money to Jackie Lacey. Yes, they did because we like what she's doing compared to Gascon and what he's done in San Francisco. What is it you let, like let about finish. Jackie let me, Lacey? Let me finish and I'll, I'll expound on that. Okay. Okay. It's not about whether or not police officers have been prosecuted. It's about how she follows the law. It's how she looks at the overall picture and when you compare LA politics and the way LA's laws are followed compared to the train wreck that's going on in San Francisco right now did you know that actually Jackie Lacey helped Gascon actually make it palatable for Prop 57 he doesn't talk about that I know <laughs> you don't even have to answer it but the whole point of it is is every county is different DAs, even when it comes to Brady List, are different. So you can't just say the police unions are the problem because if that's the case, then the people who give money to Jackie Lacey's opponent, does that mean that they are trying to give money for someone to not prosecute them? Because if you're saying that police unions are giving money so they won't be prosecuted, then wouldn't the other side be true too? That they want a different, hey, let me finish, let me get a <laughs> other district attorney in there who won't prosecute criminals? Is, is, is that argument also true? Because that would be the other side of that coin. 
Yeah, well, I don't see it that way. I know you and don't I know see it a that lot, way. And I, I don't, and I think a lot of people agree with me when it comes to police unions and how they use their their influence and their money, particularly over elected officials. And but the, they're, they're all elected officials. What do you mean over well, elected officials? Not really. You guys give money to candidates, and right? But sometimes all the, they but don't all make the, it rarely. correct. But all of the candidates are trying to be elected officials. Yeah. And I don't care what candidate well, you talk to. Why are you giving to, them the money, though? Because we support whatever their politics are. They all come into interviews. I think the question is not we, the, why they're giving them the money. It's the question is, why is, there, is the money going to an independent expenditure rather sometimes than Sometimes they give it directly, though. No, Well, that's different. Well, because there's limits. Yeah, there's limits when you give somebody money in a campaign right. Correct. They, the, that is controlled by the candidate. Correct. Correct. An independent expenditure is, for us... The local here, it's the local dark right. money. That's what it is. Well, because it's unregulated. There's no limit. There's no ceiling. Well, you, you can call it dark money, but th this is this is how it is. So Maybe with not it, in the future, well, though. We'll see. Because you're also, those same people that you're lobbying to from. change this are also people who now want to say we want to give money back. Every single one, let me finish my thought. Every single one of these elected officials all want a police and fire badge when they're running, every single one of them. I'm happy you brought that up, Marshall. Okay, and let me finish. Uh, when you talk about independent expenditures, the candidate doesn't even know who's giving the expense. No, no, that please. part is yeah, illegal. I would, I would challenge you a little bit. I would, that, yeah, I would that, challenge you on that, too. <laughs> that, well, you can challenge, you, well, you've there, done this job too long, Jasmine, you know so that I it's illegal. Know, oh, I know it's illegal, it doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't happen. Yeah, Mar Marshall, seriously. Come on, come on, really, do you really believe come, that come people on. who have independent expenditures Mar Marshall, Marshall, on their Marshall. behalf don't know? Can I, can but, I, but, can but, I say but something, But are you going to say that that only happens with police unions? No! No, not at all. No, I'm not. And you know, you know, I wouldn't even okay. get stuck on that. We're talking about a special interest. Okay. Okay. Just let's special talk, interest. Let's talk about it's a special much interest. Broader. Well, we are, are there special this into this. Are there special yeah. interests to get Gascon elected? Were there the were, people okay, are were, the special interests? Can I, can I the, the make people? my point? Because I don't want to get bogged down in that. But then the we're going to bring Tyler in because right, I don't want him to feel like he's left out. He's never even prosecuted a case. Let's not be naive about this. He's never prosecuted a case in his life. We all know people who make a deal before they file and okay. say, hey, you know, I'm going to be running for such and such, and, you know, you all want to, you know, give me a hand here. Uh, I'm going to file under whenever, okay. uh, and then uh, I can't talk to you after that. Correct. I'm okay. not saying that's not true. Okay. But that, so doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean give me money and I won't prosecute you. Because that's the leap. You, that's no, the no, leap I'm we're just making to here. Help you. That's her leap. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Now I'm just trying to help you with the framework. Understood. Here so that the conversation is illuminating for the public. <laughs> Understood. Okay. Yeah. Tyler. Illuminate us, Tyler. Yes, illuminate us. Look, we are all over the map. And Jasmine, this is your show. I'll go wherever you want. I'll say that I've known Jackie Lacey for 20 years. I know you support George. I know George. I support Jackie. I think you're wrong. But this really is supposed to be a discussion about police unions and politics. That and was the to question. Everybody's point. Can I, huh? Well, wait, can I get back to the issue of our, do, our police unions creating contracts that protect right. their people. We have no authority to unilaterally create a contract. We negotiate with management of the police department. And the truth is those contracts have very, very little of the things that you complain about, about people having too much protection. Most of that comes from the Peace Officers Bill of Rights. Jasmine, can you enlighten us on when that was written into law and who the governor was when it was passed in the 80s? Well, I think that that's actually going to be on the chopping block soon here in California. And, and I'll just say that that's what, that's what our elected officials are supposed to do. You cannot look at us and tell us that we shouldn't play by the rules that are created out there. It's not even remotely reasonable. We don't have unilateral authority. People other than us are passing laws. I would like elected officials to be held accountable for the things that they're doing or not doing. I don't want them. You know, 70% of my membership when I was at the league would come up to me and say, 
I can't stand the fact that we defend some of the people that shouldn't be on the job. And I have to explain to them the reason we have to defend them, the rules that require us to defend them. They don't want them. I don't want them. I can't tell you the number of times I sat down with chief, the chief of police and said, I'm begging you, do, do right. this right. Yep. Because if you don't do it right, we're going to go here. But it was easier to not do it right. Maybe he thought he could do it the way he did it. I, I can't explain the reasons that it doesn't get done right. But I got to do my job. Um, and then you get blamed for defending your member. <laughs> do you think, Tyler Marshall, that there is um, a conflict of interest with police unions donating to, um, for example, the sheriff's race or the district attorney's race, considering the role that police officers um, have in, in, in both of those areas. For example, with ALADS, obviously they work for the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, uh, in the city of LA, we, we uh, uh, the mayor appoints our police chief, but going to the district attorney's office, I mean, uh, you know, don't you think that's a conflict there? I don't, and and I want to know where where would you draw the line? Because, again, this is focused on police unions only, and I'm saying this from from a a, a union leader mm -hmm. talking with other unions and on how they do things. So other police unions or other labor both, unions? Both. Mm. So where would you draw the line on which union can give to this candidate and not this candidate? Oh, for me, I want to see police union money out of uh, any sheriff's race because it, it, it's Bonnie and Clyde. It's too much. You, uh, the I've, district heard you, attorney, I've heard that tagline, the, the, Bonnie the, and Clyde, the, but expound on that. The district that. attorney has to depend too much on the investigations and the work that um, the sheriffs or the police in, in their jurisdiction do. And so... To give, and then, uh, like I said, with the with the with the sheriff, which we elect in LA County, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's just a mess right there. How do you give money to either um, a, a sitting sheriff that you like or someone that you oppose? So mm -hmm. in our last election cycle, they all went against Jim McDonald mm -hmm. to get our current um, sheriff um, elected, and I just think that. For the optics, for the, for the I purpose. You, I thought you were happy about that. Yeah, I was, but that's another but not show anymore? for another day. Okay. It was hmm. a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind uh, of thing. Oh, okay. Uh, buyer's remorse. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, I just, I just think for the optics, mm -hmm. right, just so we can feel, we can rest assured that our police unions are not tainting these offices, I think that there should be no police union money going there. Should there also be no union for, I mean, no no union money going to the governor, the mayor, or any other elected official I'm as well? Glad, I'm happy you raised that question. If I had my way mm -hmm. in Jasmine land, mm -hmm. police unions wouldn't be able to no, donate I'm saying money, all period. Unions. No, all because unions. only police unions Why? have the optics of using their money, okay. power, infl influence okay. to keep their members out of prison, to keep their members from having criminal cases filed against them. SEIU doesn't have that problem. They okay? don't have any members not, that go to prison? I'm not saying they don't have any, but again, I'm looking to talk about volume here, okay. right? And it's police officers. And we're still talking about course and scope of the job. Okay, yeah. I'm just, I, it was a simple hey, well, question. Well, let me, let, me, let me make an interjection here now because I, you know, I've sat through many conversations mm -hmm. and debates. Uh, and while I don't necessarily like the outcome, uh, many attorneys in the city have opined that the right to put money in an independent expenditure is a First Amendment right because there's that, the right to have freedom of expression as to who you want to support politically. Mm -hmm. Now, whether we feel good about that or not, why can't we focus on candidates who accept money that people don't like? Like candidates who accept money from gun manufacturers, candidates who accept money from cigarette manufacturers, candidates if you, you know, if the PPL is your thing, if, if that's the thing for the community, why can't we, uh, and of course a candidate or an elected official might say, well, it's an independent expenditure, I didn't know they were gonna do it. 
okay, so the moment they do, because there are disclosure requirements, there are reporting requirements, and they're fairly immediate, then you say, okay, well then, uh, you know, sign a pledge when you file. I won't accept the following money from the following, you know, interests. I think we're going to be getting there. One of the things that I've noticed, and and again, everyone feel free to chime in. You tell me um, to give it back. But one of the things I'm noticing now with this newfound um, awakening that people are having to um, just everything, who their mayor is, who their council member is, mm -hmm. I'm just amazed. Like, people actually want to know who represents them, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I've had people say that's, to me... That's good. Um, I've had people say to me, I don't know what city I live in, really. Oh, mm. boy. Yeah. I've had people say to me that they thought Antonio Villaraigosa was still mayor of the city of L.A. So I'm inspired when I see all these numbers of people mm -hmm. out in the street, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how do we get those people from the street into the voting booth, right? Mm -hmm. But making intelligent votes, that's mm -hmm. always an issue. Or informed. Uh, yeah, informed. In intelligent and informed votes. But right. as they're, they're going through their awakening, they're learning about police unions, and mm -hmm. they're learning about the power that police unions have. And you said something very interesting earlier, Marshall. Mm -hmm. You said every elected official, every candidate wants to be able to put that police and fire badge on mm -hmm. their mailer. They want to be able to say, I'm endorsed by this police union. I'm right. endorsed by the firefighters. Well, mm, people like the firefighters. So I'm, I'm not even going to say nothing about them. Mm. But they want to be able to say that, right? Fire, un fire unions are very strong. In some places, stronger than I, police. I agree, but they... Easy. He oh, didn't make a song called F the Firefighter. Well, maybe he didn't have a bad experience with a firefighter. <laughs> or maybe he would have. But, but fi firefighter unions actually have a no, firefighter's bill of rights now, I, too. I, I know firefighters have their issues, too, particularly around racism. But going back to this issue, mm -hmm. do you think in the future, because I'm thinking in the future, that's going to be the kiss of death for candidates that are endorsed by police unions? I disagree. Really? I, I, I do you disagree. You don't think that in certain parts of... The country in certain parts of this county, for example, that that's just not going to be an attractive, um, that's not going to be an attractive quality of a candidate. I think some of the noise that is going on right now, like defunding the police, is going to come back to a bit of normalcy. The idea and what's going on in Seattle right now. Uh, the, the fact that, and I'll use UTLA again because their voice, their, their, their voice right now is very strong, and I don't think they speak for all of the teachers uh, to say to defund the police, and I, I really, truly believe that is a, is a money grab, that UTLA wants to get the budget that the school police has, and so therefore they're going to try and get rid of them. They tried this long before what's going on right now. So... The, the idea of defunding the police is the, the, along the same lines of everything else. So if you get rid of the police unions or you uh, uh, limit their ability to make any effective change, then you also can go the route of trying to defund the police because who's going to stand up for them? The elected sheriff or the uh, police chief that also is appointed by the mayor, they're beholden to the person that put them there, so they may not say anything. So you're left with those unions to be able to say it and it's no different than any other union you may make the case about whether someone goes to prison or not but our primary focus is about wages hours working conditions and improving the quality of life for our members tyler you are yes, uh you've been quiet i have a question to, uh marshall brought up defunding the police i want to ask all three of you do you actually believe that the city of Los Angeles is going to take $150 million away from the Los Angeles Police Department? Or do you think that they're just saying, yeah, this is what we're going to do so that folks will stop being camp you know, camped out in front of Eric Garcetti's house? Do you think that that money's really going to go away? I'll let Ty Tyler speak first because he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jasmine, I'll answer your question question briefly because I want to get to what I think is the real issue behind that. The short answer is, I, I agree with you, Jasmine. I don't think that money's I don't think that money's being taken away. I, I just don't. Um, but I have a bigger problem, and it, and it may and it may not. And frankly, Mayor Garcetti doesn't hasn't really talked to me since I supported his opponent in the first election. 
So um, sometimes police unions don't get who they want, but that's oh, another story. That's but so I'll sad. say this, that the real tragedy in all, all of this is that now we're talking about defunding the police department or not, or or funding the police department. We don't get an answer from the mayor on why less than six months ago, he comes up with a budget that gives the police department more money, but now all of a sudden, the smart thing to do is to take money away with no explanation as to what the new epiphany was and what he's thinking about. And the truth is, Jasmine, I think there are a lot of good reasons to look at every department's budget and figure out what we've been doing for years that we've done just because we've always done it. And I am I want everybody at the table talking about what we want from our police department. Because I'll tell you what, I did 30 years with the Los Angeles Police Department and now another five with another city entity. I know public service. I know why I do it. I know why I got into it. I know why I love to do it. And I, and I can tell you that I didn't realize some things early in my career that I know now as an aging has been, and I wish I had, and I wish we would talk about those things and really solve problems instead of doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. And we're not going to do that because we're going to get into a big fight about defunding police departments or not, eliminating police departments. Now, instead of trying to figure out how we can really, really fix and disenfranchised groups, wherever and whoever they are, we're going to, we're going to make police officers feel like they had a wasted 30 year career because they've been monsters the whole career. And every one of them is a murderer and a killer and a racist until the average police officer is fighting back. Your show last week with those four police officers, I wanted with all my heart to hear the four of them talk about the issues specific to them. But by the time they got on your show, all they could talk about was it's not as bad as people portray it. And you can't talk about my police department that way because it's still my police department. Furthering the myth that, you know, that everybody just has to turn blue. So, so okay. that's fine. So, uh, for let me, me on that. <laughs> so let me ask. Um, this question, every other city department had to take a cut because of the corona coronavirus pandemic. Everybody had to take a cut. Why should the police department be any different? Why should the police department be exempt? I, I didn't, I didn't ask for that. It, it was, it's the mayor who never, pro who proposed an increase to their budget. It's the mayor who said, I don't want any sworn personnel to be cut, but we're going to furlough civilian personnel, also in the police department. Jasmine, let's be clear. The police department civilian employees and the fire department civilian employees, they're all getting furloughed, according to the mayor. The truth is, I'm not positive all that's happening either, but that's a whole other <laughs> political discussion. Okay. Well, I mean, the other part of that is while people were at home, the police officers were at work. Okay. They, we saw some of the work that they were doing live on television. You're, you're mixing two different things. No, 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 no. We saw police officers at work mm -hmm. live on television. Okay, which part? Uh, rubber bullets. Again, you're um, talking, I'm, I'm not talking about that. You, I'm know, talking about, I, we, you said about COVID, and I said huh. about the budget because police officers were at work. You know, I, I appreciate... Um, I, look, I, I can appreciate your point of view. I'm just saying if everybody else has to take mm -hmm. a cut, why should the police department be any different? Okay, and that's a budget thing. So one of the things he mentioned there that you didn't catch is that How his you union, because you didn't, you didn't, you, you like swam over it. Mm -hmm. He mentioned the fact that, that his union did not support Eric Garcia. I heard him say that. But they supported Wendy Gruel. Right. But there was a $50 million increase to the budget of the police, right? So doesn't that speak to police unions? I mean, why would he want to give them $50 million when they didn't even endorse him? <laughs> the power of the police unions, right? Wasn't that what we were talking about? Oh, the police unions have a lot of power. Well, but, but, but that doesn't match that narrative right there. Actually, it does. You know why? Why? Because he's trying to get their endorsement the next time? I was in that race, too. 
I know. Yeah. So and you know they did they definitely. Didn't but did he give them fifty million dollars for building, the budget so they can endorse the them next time? Because he's termed Some, out anyway. Well, no, because you know people have long. Sometimes people have aspirations that go on. Mm-hmm. So, so, All for right. a very so do you, long so do you believe that fifty million dollar increase know. to the budget I was to no try idea. to get union money? I, I have no idea. Okay. All I'm just saying is don't dismiss what she's saying. I'm not dismissing yeah, it. Because you I'm know, not dismissing it. I'm just you know, saying people, that it's being made more into this evil, dirty thing that it's not. Uh, so I don't know that it's evil or dirty. It just it, it's the reality of what people sometimes do in the political process. Again, that's why I go back mm-hmm. to educating the public Great. so that they can follow where the money goes. Understood. Okay. And I agree with you Do 100%. Independent expenditures and indirect donations. I agree with you 100%. And yeah. my point is, if you're going to sanction the police unions, mm-hmm. then sanction all unions. Yeah. See, I'm not, I, I don't think all unions need yeah, it. I do think police unions do need it, though. Um, and speaking of that, another question that a lot of people have when it comes to police unions is why do you guys fight to make investigations of your members um, not transparent, that, you know, the deliberations and the outcomes, you don't want them to be public, that you fight that? Well, part of it is because uh, the... the We pay their salary. Remember that. that. We pay the salary of these officers. Okay, Just, you, all, you, you pay the salaries of a lot of elected officials that you don't get to find out the information about. It's not just police. Um, you also talked about qualified immunity and other immunities that also goes to judges and lawyers and others as well. You're not talking about stripping it from them. But there's only one group. I got to go back. It's just police officers. But police so officers don't make laws. Who, I know they just enforce them. Correct. I understand so that. So why aren't you why talking do you about that? Fight? Because I want to talk about this. This was okay. a question that a lot of people have. They okay. want to know why is it so important for y'all to fight to make sure we don't know what the outcome of investigations are. Like well, we have a right as but that, taxpayers. But that's not true because that law already passed. Once that is finalized with the new law, okay? Because we're talking about a lot of reform, but we're not talking about the reform that's happened. So that law's already changed to where it is public because right now all of the all of the newspapers in the land are going out and getting everybody's records but it has to be finished first once the actual thing is completed then so they get So you'll stop fighting after it's completed It's already law no, no, there are that's, unions no, that do law. fight. I'm talking about California right. law right now. I'm talking about California, but we have uh, this big country. We, but, but we can't talk about what happens in Texas because it's different or what <laughs> happens in Florida or Minneapolis. They, 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 had a, they had a policy, a use of force policy that's not even close to the California standards. We're all getting lumped in together. Look, I, we were talking earlier. I'm getting it on all sides. I'm getting it as a black man. I'm getting it as a police officer. I'm getting it as a union head, and I'm getting it as a Christian. And every time it's like, well, you call yourself a Christian and you stand for that. You call yourself a black man, but you're a police officer. You're a police officer and you're a police union guy and you defend that. But that's not, there's more, so much more to the story. So if we're going to have an actual conversation and talk about reform and changes, it has to be from all sides, not just from the activist side, because Tyler's saying it too. We do want change, but we don't want you throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and we also want you to acknowledge when change does happen. So for so you you know the law I'm talking about that made it transparent. Yes. Is that not a law in California? Yes. So then it why is. aren't you saying that? I look, this was a question that was posed. You guys fight to make certain things public. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the time, mm-hmm. particularly when it's obviously a fatal, a fatal shooting. Right. Like it's it's very hard. And even when information is given, mm-hmm. it's still either heavily redacted or. One of the biggest reasons is protection of that officer, and we've already seen you know, it. <laughs> Let me finish, because we've already <laughs> seen it where people go and protest outside the house, and the officer gets death threats. So that's why a lot of that is redacted and protected. Even right now, a lot of officers' names who weren't even involved in things, just that they were officers, their names and addresses were being released. I and you know think, that that's the truth. I don't think... I think that's an extreme. I don't think that... Everything that's going on right now is extreme. I don't think that uh, on a regular basis, if, if officers personal information was made public that people would be rushing over to their house 
and and giving them death threats. But even if they did get death threats, I mean, look. You don't think Jackie Lacey's been getting death threats? She, I don't believe her. I think she says things for sympathy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But that's a whole other conversation. I do wow. not want to get bogged down in Jackie okay. Lacey, though, because that could be a two-hour show. What I do want to know... Well, call me back for that two-hour yeah. show. What I do want to know is where you... I hear all of this about how great the union is. We're just doing the same thing that other labor unions do. Um, we're fighting for our members. So what is your role in police reform? What is my role? Actually, like, I, what is the union's I'm role? I'm actually leaving a sacramental no, I mean, night. real police... Real, I'll real tell you. police reform. Okay, Tyler. I'll start because I stood in front of my membership over and over and over again and explained to them that it was not my goal to get them to not have to work a, a full week's work or not have them have to do anything. That I What I needed from all of them was 100% of their abilities, and we needed to get, get them the training and the equipment they needed to carry out the mission, because what really is fulfilling for a human being, and to Marshall's point on making their lives better, I'm all about, I said to the chief frequently, we really want the same things for our people. I want them to be healthy, happy, and fulfilled, so they'll come into work and do their job and give 100% for this city and do it to the best of their abilities and we can raise the level. Because when, if we really want to make money, if we really want to get paid, Jasmine, the way to do that is to have people who when they say, oh, I'd like to move to Memphis and sign up for the Memphis Police Department and put it on their resume, I'm, a, I'm currently a Los Angeles police officer. When they get picked up, because of the reputation of the world's finest police department, which we've always what claimed, but we've never that? been able to Los Angeles Airport Police. <laughs> what department is that? The Los Angeles Airport Police. I, I'm just saying that when we, when we elevate our people to do what they're supposed to do and do it better than anyone else, that's when we get paid. That was always my objective. It was always to keep them safe. But I have to get back to the issue of privacy. I know you don't know it, and and I and I'm not discounting that maybe it's it's over, you know, it's just overthought. But in 1985, in July, I graduated from the police academy. In on Halloween in October of 1985, Detective Tom Williams was gunned down picking up his six-year-old son at Faith Baptist school in effectively my neighborhood. And I'll just tell you, Jasmine, the only thing I was ever afraid of when I had kids was somebody coming after my family. You can come after me all day long. It didn't bother me. But the, po the prospect of bothering my wife or coming after my kids always haunted me. And maybe, again, maybe that's an overreaction. But and maybe we need to figure out a way to train that out of people. But I'm not sure that we need to have any risk of that at all. And, and I don't know that we can totally eliminate that either. I think that going forward, um, the, what the trend has been is that the public wants more information, not less. And they and want sunshine everywhere. We haven't gotten it everywhere we want it yet, mm -hmm. but I think that we will. I think that that is where we are headed. Um, and I do think that the fight between for criminal justice reform advocates is not with their police departments. I think the fight yeah. is with their the unions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I, totally. It's not the fight with us either. I, I think it is. And and some of it's these misguided. unions are, are, are game for the fight because they're all over the news. Like Which unions are that? Um, are they in California? Well, yes. Um, uh, the the PPL had some very interesting comments that's, this week. That's a different. But and, what was that about? Oh, the budget being cut. But, but why what? was the budget being cut? Because of the the advocates who advocated for the defunding to defunding of the, the police, police. which, so, which again, is only going to hurt other people <laughs> by defunding the police. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think one point eight seven billion dollars, mm -hmm. and and they're threatening to take one hundred and fifty million away of that. I. think think the police department will be okay. You hope so. I think they will. Okay. So when we talk about like, uh, um, so 
if we're talking about the and ability, make it quick because we kind of because we talk about the ability because you, you said it on your other show about the ability to sue police officers. Mm, that's my next week's show. I know. So so I think along that it should also have the ability to sue legislators that make bad laws. Well, they let's go there too, <laughs> because when we're enforcing those laws, and someone makes a bad law or a bad ruling for a judge, you should be have to go after them too. And my, that's what I'm saying. If we're talking about transparency, we're talking about reform. Let's do all of it, not some of it, or not yeah, just the part that right you don't to like. Do that when you know, some legislative body passes a law and it goes through the entire process mm -hmm. and it's signed by the highest executive uh, mm -hmm. in in that in entity, that branch, that yeah. means that you have exhausted your administrative remedies. Mm -hmm. And if you're still dissatisfied, you have the right to go into litigation right. and file a case in court. So you have right. that right now. Right. There's not. It's not a reform that exists. There's. There's nothing to discuss. You just go on and do it. And when it comes to qualified immunity, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about that. I have some great attorneys coming in good. that love to sue the police. Can you let me know so I can bring department. some good attorneys in too, so you can have both sides <laughs> of the argument? I always want both sides. You and Tyler are here. No, I'll bring in some good attorneys that defend police, so you mm. can have both sides of the argument. Not not have it split up in different shows because some people will not watch that show. Okay, just let's talk about show. let's talk about that. Let's, do let's that. see. We I'll I'll see if my attorneys feel up for a debate. I hope they do. They love if they're to talk. attorneys. They yeah, should love they a debate. love to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carl Douglas is excellent. Well, I got some excellent people to go with him too. <laughs> and yes, they're they're paid for by union money. Oh Lord, Tyler, thank you so much. We are coming to the end of this edition of Straight No Chaser. We got through a lot of the questions and Good. we had a spirited mm -hmm. conversation. Hey, I love you, Jasmine. I love reform, but let's make it fair Do and Do you really equitable. love reform? I do. And I think Tyler's still going to be my friend. Um, of course. Oh, yeah. I just hung up on you. If, if <laughs> no, we, he's if, still there. But if we can't agree to disagree and be not be disagreeable and be, that's the problem we're having in our country right now. People don't know how to disagree, work on reform together. Uh, Without being disagreed. No, I agree. Well, you know what? But you know what? A lot of people, I have to say, because mm -hmm. I've been through some disagreeable situations. As I it's okay to be disagreeable as long as you have the ability to facilitate moving people through that. Agree. Okay? Because I'll, I'll when people that. are in pain, mm -hmm. as I think we all were, yes. as we watched that video, mm -hmm. screaming, oh, my God. You know, you have to let people be in pain and express their pain and their anger and then continue to be mindful of the fact that we do this for a living. Mm -hmm. So we, we should be able to accept the fact that people are in pain, but we also have the capacity to take it, yep. you know, and to hear it and then to try to work together to facilitate better outcomes. And I so, hope and pray that that's the outcome. Well, and it, it probably will be. Yeah. You, what you know, bothers me we, is the posturing that does nothing. Well, you know what? Posturing is a, so what? You know what? But you not if to, it doesn't do anything. No, if it's no, just no. for it, a phone. Y'all want to go for may, another no, no, no. hour. No, it may not do <laughs> anything. The is ready to go for, home. For us, that shouldn't <laughs> affect us. It if does. we have our mm -hmm. eye on a greater outcome mm -hmm. for the people that we are all sworn to represent and to protect and uplift. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have to be better people. Agreed. Okay, and even if everybody's posturing and doing photo ops and saying one thing and doing another, which is why I go back to again, you know, look, folks, follow the money because those are your answers. Okay, yeah, Tyler, were you going to say something? I'll let you have the last I, word before I close out the show. I, I was going to give Jan an amen on that. I, I really, uh, all I really wow. want to you an amen. Oh, an amen. He, he didn't give you any money, but he gave never, you an amen. Never, <laughs> never, nothing. An endorsement, nothing, never. <laughs> Ever. I was going to let it go, but holder? Jan, no. we endorsed you when one of our own was running against you. Wait, so that and is? It was my first one of his term, own was running was against you. Who was that? But we had, we had a, a oh, kid working in Newton no, who was, no. was running against you. Came to us for an endorsement. We said, sorry, Jan is there and she's doing great work and oh. get out of our office. Uh, so okay. we endorsed you. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. We have right. the last okay. word. I don't, I don't know, Tyler. So we'll the, to, that's going to do it. We're going to do it. the facts on that one. Yeah, that's Make some findings. <laughs>
That'll do it for this edition of Straight No Chaser. I want to thank, as always, Felicia Poetis Morris. Thank you for having us here at Morris Media Studios in Lamert Park. As always, if you have comments, you can leave them in the comment section on Facebook. You can email me at hello at IamJasmine.com. I am on Twitter at Jasmine and on Instagram at Hello Jasmine. And yeah, I will respond. Next week, we're going to look at qualified immunity. And it looks mm. like I'm going to have to get with Marshall because he wants to have one of his attorneys yes. come in here for that show. So we'll try to make that happen. Please do. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Jan. And thank, thank you, Marshall, for thank coming you. in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Love you much. Thank mm -hmm. you. So you two worked.